Hey, what's up, Leron here. Today, we're gonna learn how to mix every skin color out there. Now, after this video, you don't come at me with what colors to use because I'm gonna answer it all for you. So here it is. So I have about nine photos here uh, and I took the liberty to sample some colors so that you can actually see where the color comes from. And this, um, this demonstrates something very important. Skin color is contextual, right? It's very easy to say, okay, this kind of a color, that kind of a color. No, 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 no. It will greatly depend upon the light and shadow. Let me fix the camera here. The light and shadow conditions, okay? That's pretty much the, the thing that will dictate everything. Now, what kind of things are there around? Like this red here will reflect on my skin. It's very important to take that into consideration, not to mention makeup and all sorts of different things that come into play. So skin color is not monotone and it's more about having the skill to be able to mix whatever color you see. Now, what colors are we gonna use to mix all skin colors that you're gonna see here? We're only gonna use three colors, magic, magic time. Thalo blue, quinacridone rose, and lemon yellow. The reason we're using these colors is that you can mix everything with them. 99% of whatever you're gonna mix, I'm gonna mute my phone, 99% of whatever you're ever gonna mix is gonna come from these three colors, believe it or not. So let's get started with the first example here, kind of a random order, and I did uh, include uh, links to everything in the description box below, so you can see pretty much um, all the reference photos in their original form and my own sampled version. So let's look at from top to bottom here. These are the easiest colors to mix. The reason why is because it's a very muted color. So I'm looking at this and I recognize a bit of warmth, right? But it's very neutral too. So what I'm gonna do is just grab a bit of my warm colors. I already had some a nice little warm mix here on the paper and I'm gonna just try. I'm just gonna go for it. So right now, uh, this is what I mixed in. It's actually quite close, believe it or not, right? Um, actually wouldn't even fix it too much. Maybe a bit more warmth. So I'm just gonna grab a bit more of the quinacridone, just a bit, and that's how you make your little corrections whenever necessary. So that adds a bit more pink to it. If we wanna get to the uh, second um, color I marked, we'll add even more warmth to it. So a bit more of the yellow, a bit more of the red, and we'll get that bit of a neutral pinkish tone. Now look at the bottom. Here we're going into brown color territory. So I'm gonna grab more of my blue. And the way you do this, the way you do this is you don't know, so you try. So here it is, this is super blue, right? We need to neutralize it. How are we gonna neutralize the blue? With a bit of red and a bit of yellow, okay? And we see, so this is what we get. This is a little too red. Let's add more yellow. We need to kind of move towards browning the color a bit, right? Um, so a bit of everything really, because we need to push it to be a little darker and then just a touch of blue because phthalo blue is quite dominant. That's the thing, one thing you want to watch out for. It's very dominant, so it's very easy to mix with, but you have to be careful for it not to go too dominant. Now this is not close enough, so I'm gonna go a little crazy here and end up with a bit of a darker violet, right? And from that, I'm gonna add a bit of yellow to it and a bit more red. We're trying, we're testing things out. And this is more towards the brown I'm looking for. It may not be the right value, but it's actually closer in terms of color. See, it need to be a little more neutralized, a little bit more muted, okay? So look at all the variety we got out of how many colors. And again, I'm not, I'm not f trying to match the color and value exactly to the T, but I'm showing you how you can mix just about anything, okay? If I really want to, to um, to mix the exact accurate color, it will be much easier to see it with a white background because my paper is white. What I'm looking at has a black background in this specific example. So just a side note for you to uh, to think about, okay? Now let's move on to the next one, okay? So we're gonna start, let's say left. That's a very pink color. I already have some kind of an orange pink. Let's push it. In fact, let me clean, sorry for bumping the camera, let me clean this all up so we can get a somewhat fresh start. Ooh, Liron's cleaning his palette. It's incredible. Uh, so, uh, and I'm just gonna get a bit of my quinacridone rose. So that's gonna put us in the maybe pinkish realm. Now we need to neutralize it. So a bit of yellow and just a smidge of blue, right? That's gonna get us a bit of a purpley look. 
So I'm going to add a bit more of yellow to it to neutralize it more. One thing you can always use is just try and circle around the gray color. If you can circle around the gray color enough, you will be able to match pretty much what you see. Okay, so now we get this. Now let me use even more color here. I'm, I'm kind of uh, just not mixing enough. So we have a bigger mix. Usually it's a little easier to work with because you don't have to constantly remix. So this is a uh, purpley uh, gray. So what do we need to make it more brown like the right example on the, on the right side? Don't worry, we'll get to some uh, white background later on. It's going to be a little easier to mix these on. And we got a brown by just adding a bit of blue, a bit of red, um, pretty much a bit of everything. Now let's look at the brown down below. That's a bit of a stronger brown, but it's also quite warm, right? It's a brown. So I'm going to add a bit of everything, a bit of blue. And you just, you can even put this on paper. Just go like this. It's recording. Yeah, it's good. Okay. Just go like this. Ooh, this is super blue. In fact, let me switch over to a larger brush. So you go like this and you go, wow, this is quite blue. So I'll, I'll have to neutralize it or push it towards the warm with a bit of red and a bit of yellow. Put that on paper. What do you get? It's nice, but it's not strong enough. A bit more of the red and a bit more of the yellow. So this will cr create a very strong orange, right? We need to darken that, add a bit of the blue, right? And this is maybe too neutral, so add a bit more of red. And you will get that nice little red-ish. You, you can even add a secondary color if you need help, like mixing a very warm kind of, but just, just to be used as a, as a shortcut. You can still mix pretty much everything with these colors. Uh, maybe go towards the brown a little. Oops, I switched to my uh, other uh, yellow, which is why I was having a hard time. Let me stick to my lemon yellow. That happens. Not the new gamboji kind. And we get a very strong one. Add a bit of blue. Sometimes it's going to take a while to get the exact color you're after. And that is fine. That's part of the experience. And it's probably darker, so I'm going to go once again with my blue. Again, you see me struggling a bit. That's fine. That's a part of it. That's too blue. Add our yellow to it. And a bit of red. A bit more red. And it's starting to get close. Let's put the, this directly there. Okay? Starting. I think I actually was closer around here. Okay? That can happen. Sometimes you'll struggle. Let's do another one. So this is a, an interesting one um, because there is a very interesting conditions of light and shadow. So what you see here is a very strong reflection of orange from the clothes. Okay. Uh, and on the other side, you're seeing a very neutral kind of a thing. So we already mixed a lot of it in here, right? So actually, if we already mix something very clearly, I'll probably skip it just to save some time. But look at this mix here. It's pretty much what we have on the top left area. Now on the right, it's, it's pretty much black. So I will just grab a black color and see if it answers my needs and if it's close enough. Sometimes it'll feel like the black you're looking at is a little more warm. So add a bit of red to it and you warm it up or add a bit of yellow you warm it up right but that's pretty close that that would be enough to get you like 90 percent accuracy believe it or not we're in the range of 90 percent accuracy 85 and even if you're 85 percent accurate if your drawing is accurate and your values are accurate you're you're down to realistic um territory for sure Right. If you tweak it a little, you'll get to photorealism. But that's pretty much all you need. Now, let's mix that beautiful orange to the right. So orange is, in, in theory, very easy to mix. So you grab this beautiful quinacridone rose and this beautiful lemon yellow. And we got a deadlock. This is like 90 percent accurate. Right. Um, it's not perfect again, but it is there. It's close enough. As for the brown. We, have a, we can just bring a bit of uh, blue there. So that's going to neutralize the whole thing. But then add a bit more of the red and a bit more of the yellow. And you see how I really mix this. And there you go. You got a nice little brown there. You see how I mix this bright orange with my quinacridone rose, right? It's not a limitation. You can mix very bright colors with it too. You don't have to rely or fall back to Pyrrhal Scarlet. But sometimes it'll be more effective. Maybe you're like, okay, I'm going to put this. We're already halfway there. Add a bit of my yellow and we're done, right? Sometimes you, you may want to introduce a fourth color, but I'm just showing you how 
what color should I be using is just a non-factor. Okay, let's do another one. Okay, now here we have a bit more makeup, uh, which is good. So it's gonna we're gonna be able to see some different things. So look at the top right. That's a very nice kind of peach color. So if we're talking about a peach color, it's pretty much an, a light orange. So let's see what we can get here. I'm just gonna start somewhere, and this will obviously be too too neutral and too like gray. So I need it to be a little more yellow. So I'm gonna add more yellow to my mix and maybe even more red, more water. My mix is dirty, right? If you really want to start fresh, you you can clean everything up. I'm just, I wanna show you the principle behind it, okay? And we're, we're you know, I'll have to put it side by side. Uh, it should be a little more neutral and a bit more like a creamy kind of, maybe something like this, probably a little lighter. Um, bit of yellow, that's too yellow. I would actually neutralize it a bit with a bit of blue, right? You just play the game until you get to that accurate spot, okay? It can be a little hard sometimes, I will, I'll, I'll definitely say that. So if you look at the lips, I did want to sample out the lips just to keep it a little more interesting. Uh, so this is more of a pink. To get that, let me actually clean this up a bit. To get this pink, the easiest route is to start with quinacridone rose and take it from there. See what happens. This is PV19, by the way. So I'm just gonna place that on paper. So this is pretty much the accurate color, but it should be a little more neutralized. So let me pick more of that and add just a bit of blue. It's very easy to pick up a lot of um, Thalo blue, so you have to be a little careful. I'm gonna add a bit more of the red. It's all in the nuances again, but if you can get it like 90% accurate, you're good. Then a bit more of that. And if you have a hard time, just reset back to the color you started with and you'll be able to. So I think that's pretty close. Actually, it should be cleaner, it should be cleaner. Less nuance, less, something like that. That'll be a little closer. Again, I'm looking at a screen. It's not ideal. Ideally, you want to use um, you want to use a square like a viewfinder and print it. Something printed will be easier to match. Okay, but we're going through this. I really want to show. Okay, nice, nice. White background makes it a lot easier. So let's start with the top left. So I'm gonna grab a bit of yellow and red. Let's see where that puts us. We're actually like there, we're there, this is really close. I, I probably would not add, I think maybe just darker, just a bit, right? And again, this shows you like wherever you sample on the face, you're gonna get a different color. It's very important to understand this. The, the skin tone, is skin color is not just unified, okay? It's not just white, black, you know, whatever. It doesn't work that way. And it's very hard to find actual black on the face, just in deep, deep shadows. It'll be a brown, it'll be a yellowy brown, it'll be a reddish brown, it'll be a whatever, a, a pinkish brown. This is pretty much everything you're playing with. So this, now if you, we go down below, it looks lighter. So let me light it up a bit with a bit more water. And what you'll notice, it might also be a little yellower. So we can just pick up a bit of yellow from here because it's a very thin kind of nuance or maybe just add a bit of it from there. And we're getting close. Again, it's not gonna be a perfect color match, but it's close, right? And if we move down to the brown, let's try that out. Sometimes you'll have a color that really matches it nicely. Until, when, you, when you get sick of it, just shout at the screen, okay, we get the point. But I wanna go through a lot of these on purpose, okay? Sometimes you'll find a color on the palette that brings you like really close. So maybe I have this kind of a color and that's okay to rely on that and to take it from there. Like this is a very nice kind of reddish brown. So it can help us mix that strong color. Then maybe if we add uh, a bit of yellow and just a touch of blue to it. Uh, let's do this. Let's do this kind of a thing here. Let's switch gears a bit. Just, I wanna see. So what happens if I mix a blue with that brown? So I get this terrible color. But then if I increase the uh, this and maybe add a bit of red, right? Feel free to think outside the box um, and try out colors you're not used to, right? So this gets us pretty close, just a bit darker. Uh, so feel free to don't you know? 
you have to make it easy on yourself sometimes. So if you're using these three colors and you're doing wonderful, you mix pretty much everything you want, but then you encounter a color and you're just struggling. You have no idea how to mix it, but you have a color that kind of looks like it on the palette. Don't work against yourself. Give it a try, right? Um, that's the point here. Uh, let's try uh, maybe one last example. Let's do the last picture I have here, okay? Because this shows you how important the reflected light is, right? On his face, there's a light that turns this almost to lilac kind of paint, right? It's a gray, okay? So we can start from pretty much a gray and then push it in the right direction. What I would actually do is grab this, so this is pretty much a nice gray, add a bit of carbazol violet to it because I recognize a bit of that there. So look at what happens here, pretty close. If I want to blue it up a little more, I can add just a bit of blue there. And I get this beautiful reflected light on the face that's a little cool. And all of these nuances together lead to a very interesting, like if I play around the nuances, so maybe some parts are a little brown, right? And then uh, some parts are a little more red, maybe around the nose or lips or ear. Notice how bright and, and warm-ish the temperature is around the ear, maybe some parts are a little more yellow, and it's this nuance that you see right here that makes the face look interesting. So just to wrap it up, a couple of pointers. Skin tone, it's not, you know, tone, color, whatever, I'm using both words interchangeably. It's not uniform. There is, it, it's affected by everything around, right? Everyone's color is, is a bit, it's nuanced. It's very, very nuanced. It's not as simplistic as, unfortunately, society tries to make it today. It's very complex, and we have more similarities than differences. Every color here, you can use every color to mix pretty much every color if you know what you're doing and you have the other two to three colors to use, right? And, and just to break it down to the most basic form. Again, if you use cyan, magenta, and yellow, cyan is a phthalo blue, magenta is quinacridone rose, and a yellow is a lemon yellow, you can mix 90% of what you see out there, putting you in the range for realism, right? Because people try to be a perfectionist, but, but you know, they're stepping over, how the saying goes, you step over uh, whatever. You try and save uh, nickels, you step over dollars, whatever. However it's said, you're, people are trying so hard to match the exact color. They completely miss the picture. They miss a very effective and fun process. Uh, and this is what I'm trying to demonstrate here. All of the things you see here and most of it here, it's just three, three colors that you can mix everything from, Right. So don't ask me what colors I'm using, no, I'm kidding. You can ask me what colors I'm using and there are some very specific mixes that work better for some purposes, definitely, right? Some mixes don't mix a, a nice enough of a gray and, and you need to maybe switch one color out. There is some nuance, but for the vast majority of cases and for the vast number of beginners out there, this can get you so far. So if you're gonna buy new paints, just get three and play around with mastering your current tools. You can then add later on some convenience mixtures. I hope that makes sense. And I hope seeing all of these different, you know, different people, different colors, different light and shadow conditions uh, makes sense to you. Give it a try. It's really, really fun to match colors. I want to thank you so, so much for watching. Thank you to everyone who supports me on Patreon. Thanks to, thank you to everyone who buys a course. Uh, my courses, I think, are... Um, uh, embody that same spirit of simplicity, right? Especially the frustration-free watercolor course, very straightforward, how to simplify the process for yourself. If you're struggling with, for example, just using two brushes and have one large, one small, uh, and, and using different mixes with them, uh, a minimal color palette, all of these things make you faster, make you better, make you get the results you want. So I hope you'll consider getting one of them if you haven't. Uh, and with that, we'll see you in the next vid. Until then, take care.